turn. Turn, turn, turn. Keep turning. Right, I'm gonna leave Keep one. Turning. I'm gonna uh -huh. leave one earphone, one side off, so you can hear us. Okay, we cool. We can talk to you. We don't have the final specifications of the consumer version nailed down at this point. We want to make it as good as possible. Uh, the developer kit is uses an ultra low latency head tracker, has a 110 degree diagonal field of view, and a resolution of 640 by 800 per eye. Right now, it's not a super smooth, polished experience. You don't just plug it in and all of your games work. There's a limited number of games that work. Um, not all of them are going to work perfectly out of the box in every scenario. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's no reason that a consumer couldn't use it to play games, but mm -hmm. I think that they would be much happier with a polished consumer version down yeah. the line. It's perfect for game developers who want to build VR experiences, mm -hmm. less so for the average gamer who wants to plug in and play Call of Duty. It needs to be pretty decent PC hardware. It doesn't have to be, you know, high-end enthusiast. I'd say that anything maybe mid-range, probably mid-range gaming hardware and up is required to have a really great experience. The spec and the, and the graphics and what mm -hmm. resolution you're running at, those are all things that will impact um, how fast the game runs. So, mm -hmm. But you're not going to need an, a, a crazy expensive mm -hmm. gaming computer to be able to use it. Mm -hmm. We're just focusing on PC right, right now. It's an open platform. Everybody, all, all the developers have one. So it's really easy to get them out to PC developers mm -hmm. right now. And consoles, that's something we'd love to work on consoles later. But right now, we're just focusing on PC. Mm -hmm. If you're using uh, Unity or Unreal Engine, it's going to be really trivial to integrate basic support. You're still going to want to design the game so that it has um, so that it's well optimized for playing in virtual reality hardware. But in terms of having basic support, we're able to look around and also have you know we weapon aiming. That's going to be really easy. If you're not using Unreal or uh, Unreal or Unity, then we're providing code examples and a software development kit that make it really easy for you to integrate support into those engines. And really, one of the great things about Connect is the way Microsoft opened up the SDK to everyone, so that they could build these projects that weren't necessarily for games. And we really think the Rift is going to do that um, in the VR space. The thing that the Rift does differently that no other head mount has done really well is field of view. Um, I think that high refresh rate is really important. You know, Carmax talked about 120 hertz being really, really important for a compelling virtual reality experience. And I think that it can make a really big difference. But if it's a choice between high refresh rate and a small field of view and then a gigantic field of view and a normal refresh rate. I mean, you still want it to be running at full 60 frames per second, but if you choose between those, I think the wide field of view is the clear choice. Oh my gosh, so many. Pro there's, I, th I think there's been about uh, six major design revisions where the design completely changed, or, or at least changed really significantly, and I actually started building prototypes and designating them as PR1, Prototype 1, Prototype 2, Prototype 3, and I guess this would be the PR6 mm -hmm. in terms of major design revisions. But for each of those revisions, there were also usually at least two or three different minor minor revisions. So many, many prototypes that I've built and, mm -hmm. and destroyed, built and destroyed, built and destroyed, <laughs> okay. or um, built and kept. I think eventually we're going to get to something that, you know, maybe not a hollow deck where you're sim simulating actual synthetic realities perfectly without any need for hardware but i think we'll get to something where you can get most of the way there and 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 trick people pretty well that they're actually in a in a real environment when they're actually just in their home hooked up to their computer it's been incredible working with john carmack because he's just so knowledgeable about software and hardware and he's just been a phenomenal advisor through the whole project and especially at the kickstarter and development kit level but um, everyone we've talked to has been excited to send their feedback. Uh, you know, we had the virtual insanity panel at QuakeCon where we had um, John and Michael Abrash from Valve and uh, Palmer all chatting about VR. And that's the sort of discussions that we're having with developers on a daily basis about what we can do for the SDK and what we can do for the hardware and really how to make it the best experience for gamers at the end of the day.